<laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you every Monday through Friday now, daily, by the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where they're serving hot, fresh food 24-7. Moan, what's going on on this happy Friday? It is happy, happy. isn't it? It is happy, man. It's a happy Friday. Uh, a lot. Well, you got the uh, NCAA tournament going on. You have uh, baseball picking up and starting. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of all of that, the NFL just bulldozes all of the headlines. So, yeah, there's a lot <laughs> going on does. there, too. It just does. And nobody, <laughs> nobody has accounted for more of those headlines, certainly not in volume, than the Pittsburgh franchise. Wow. Yeah. This is like my deep, cogent analysis after a quarter century of covering this team. Wow. <laughs> you the, know? The, real, the real question is, even, you know, for you, has there ever been this much movement, oh. traction, moves, signings, and a free agency? Like, we no. used to sit back as players, just pull the curtain back a little bit. And we've been a group chat when, when we're seeing all these big deals go by. And, uh, specifically the offensive line, and we'd be like, man, who are we going to sign? And to a man <laughs> almost, everybody's like, Dan, you know damn yeah, well man. we Nobody. don't sign anybody. We'll probably get a veteran the next week or something like that. That's what we've always done. And, you know, to that point, um, to that point, it's because of this reason, I think. The foundation that we have for years has been set, Right. You would agree. Like, majority of the time, we had the quarterback. We had a line for the most part. The defense has always been kind of solid, pretty solid, really good. So it wasn't many moves to make. And all of the guys that you had playing solid, pretty good, whatever you want to call it, were all the guys that you had drafted or free agent guys, undrafted free agents, that developed. And that standard of being there, and I'll say this too, the other part of this too, DK, is where we're transitioning away from um, transition away from the way we've always done it is the, 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 the centerpiece in all of that was you walked into every season with number seven. And I think the biggest point to be made about that is you got to make sure that you find a way to not have a drop off from the exit of seven. That's what I've thought about because I talked about it in my, uh, in my morning job here in Nashville. And I was just like, you know, the, the fan base is looking for them to do something. And I was like, well, we didn't really do anything in Pittsburgh because we had the guy already. And I think this fan base is looking here in Tennessee. They're sitting there like, well, I, I need my fan base to do something so that we can compete. Pittsburgh, we never had to worry about that because walking into the stadiums, DK, what? I tell you all the time. Ben is going to yeah. win half of them by himself or contribute to winning half by <laughs> all, by himself. I know. And everybody mean. else got to play their role, you know? Not specifically him, but he brings that attention to himself that if you don't stop him and he has a good day, he can beat you with his arm. Yeah, we've seen it how many times. <laughs> uh, I, the list – of the players that the Steelers added. You have it in front of you, right? Yeah, I do. I have it in front of me, man. The list that they've it. added. Let's have it. They are, man, five free agents. Uh, Mitch Trubisky. We'll get into that situation a little bit more. Uh, offensive lineman Mason Cole and James Daniel. Linebacker Miles Jack, which has Steeler Nation just really feeling it. And uh-huh. cornerback Levi Wallace, man, as you told me before we came on air, my uh, fellow eighth round draft pick. <laughs> You I like drafted that, guy. Huh? I did like that, man. That's good, good. for him. So here's 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 my thing. This is what I this is the main thing that I'm curious to hear from you about mm-hmm. today. You have five guys coming in, and like you said, this franchise went like decades with having only James Ferrier as the free agent <laughs> signing. Remember and James it Harrison was like, back, <laughs> and it was like, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about like, uh, yeah. you know, the, the standard free agent type. We're going to take somebody off the open market. It was just Farrier for the longest time, so everyone got used to a certain way of doing mm-hmm. things. Now, let me ask you this: Everyone can get all excited in March about all these free agents. Okay, but that has a little bit of a Cleveland feel for me. Okay, Okay. meaning you still have to make them come together. Look, you and I can't have it both ways because we rip Cleveland every March when this was happening to them. (laughs) You still got to come together as a team. Now, what kind of challenge does Mike Tomlin face in making sure that these guys are stealers? Mm -hmm. What kind of challenge does Cam Hayward face in putting these guys together as a group? 
what about the offense? Who's the leader on the offense now at all? Who is it? You that's, know what I mean? They're all children. They they are. And, and okay, so defensively, those guys going in on that side of the ball. Miles Jack, he's a savvy guy. Very smart guy. I remember playing against him when when uh, he was in Jacksonville, even as a young guy. Yeah, this guy understands. And I think he understands the importance of coming into that defense. And, of course, they do have Cam. You know what I'm saying? So, and the same goes with Levi Wallace. Levi Wallace is probably going to play in a position to where Joe was at. And he saw, he saw Joe Hayden play that position. You know, and there's still that understanding that, look, I'm playing on a Pittsburgh defense. If for anything, for years, ages. If you didn't have anything, you're going to have defense in Pittsburgh. Am I correct? Uh, you are, but who does that? Who instills that? Is it it's Cam? Cam 100%. Okay, it's so Cam. It's like it's those, TJ. Those, those it, talks it, in Latrobe and, and, and sitting on the steps at St. Vincent College. I, I think uh, after practice. Very much so. The culture is, is going to stay. And I've never seen the, ch- the culture change. Even from transition from older guys to younger guys, it stayed the same because this is the other part of it, too. And I admire those guys that do it. Those older players always usually come back and have a talk with a guy like a Miles Jack, have a conversation. I remember what Cam type conversation or is the expectation that, look, Coach T will not. I don't think it for anything. Let that defense fall to whatsoever. I, I just can't see it now. Offensively for me, DK, you're right. Yeah, There's a lot. Luck. The steady <laughs> 80 isn't there. But you know what? I think that's a good thing. And you want to know why? Because if we do the same thing over and over as if Ben is still behind quarterback, then nobody will ever look forward to the future. They'll always be saying, well, when Ben was here, when Ben was here, and I know this for sure, Ben kind of want that to be moved forward a little bit to where the focal point isn't on him. And, and so for those guys, I think Chu's got to be a guy to embrace it. I think Najee's mindset has got to be embraced a little bit. Deontay, those guys, I think if that group of young players, mainly young players, can come together, DK, and say, look, it's on us to, to make sure that we're holding up our end of the deal. I think that's where that culture comes into place. Again, this is where Canada has to say, if I'm going to be successful, I himself, the coordinator, has to lead, have to lead those guys to the promised land of being productive offensively. You know, the leader of this offense has to be Mitch Trubisky. It just does. I, there's, there's not another dynamic that makes sense here, is there? It, no, and it should be easy. You know why? Not many players get a second chance. And he's also playing mm. for their bigger contract, too. Not many quarterbacks get that to where they're opening day of free agency signings like this. No, they're usually traded or something like that, DK. When we come back, let's, let's dig a little more deeply into the Mitch situation here. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you by the Get Go Cafe and Market. And Ramon, we're going to talk about Mitch and whether or not it is right now his job. First of all, what's your assessment of that? Before I have a follow up question on this, yeah, um, I is it his job his right now? I, yeah? I do think it's his job. The rollout, the first day signing of free agency, the introduction. All signs point to stroking a, a, a paintbrush on the wall that says, Mitch, as long as you don't mess this up and you are who we heard you were and um in Buffalo, then it's yours to to lose, honestly. And truth mm-hmm. be told, it might be his regardless of the situation, too. I, I can't paint many pictures in my mind to where he's not the guy. Former first rounder. Um all the praise he's had about him this offseason. Like I said, we re- reached out to Dirty Red to honestly get a player's feel for him. And this would Dirty- be Tyler Matikavich. See, Moan <laughs> occasionally will drop a nickname on you like you're supposed to know what a Dirty Red is. <laughs> Tyler <laughs> Matikavich was a, uh, a special teams guy uh, yeah. with the Bills this past season. Of course, and he just stamped him. And it wasn't a sales pitch to me. And I just told him, like, yo, how did you feel about him? If you ask me how a player is, they're like, man, he's good. And I would say, but... He's trash, and he's, he he had none of that. He he said nah. specifically, if uh if if he went down, if Josh Allen went down, then they didn't have they didn't think twice about could Mitch Trubisky win games for them. That's what he said. Well, that's pretty significant praise on a couple of levels. Um, as an aside here, Tr- you know Trubisky is working within a Josh Allen offense, meaning yeah. in practice and preseason and everything. 
And who do we think of when we think of Josh Allen, a young Ben? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, Josh oh, Allen's yeah. been asked about that himself, and Josh Allen oh, uh, has God. broached the subject. So uh, that doesn't mean that Trubisky's coming in here and, and, and stepping into Ben's offense. Matt Canada has to do that. But that's where I get into the whole, if I'm the Steelers, mm-hmm. do I come right out and declare that he's the starter? See, I, I see your reaction there because yeah. that, to me, is the real challenge. Does mm-hmm. Mike Tomlin at his next availability, which by the way won't be until the the owners meetings uh, later this month, but once he's available, that's going to be the first question that he's asked: Is Mitch Trubisky your starter? How does he answer that? And you you know what? I actually had a, a a second part to my first question you had, and I held off because I figured you would ask me <laughs> what would he say. This okay. is the thing, though. Too, it's the beauty of Pittsburgh. We talk about this culture all the time. They're going to say it's a competition, and rightfully so. It will be. Mason will have the opportunity to put his talents on display. But I'll say this. you got two guys behind Mr. Bisky at this point right now that we assume that feel like they can be starters in this league. If Mason does all right, man, and you, you have the ability to put out good tape for him in the preseason, I honestly do think you try to find – a trade bargain maybe later this summer after camp or something like that. Hmm. I, I just think his aspirations are higher than being Mitch, Trubis- Mitch Trubisky's backup. And I feel Dwayne Haskins is almost in that same boat too. Both of them are super young. But every position in camp is is competition. And that's where I said like the culture of the way we've always done things will push those three guys forward. And we'll see that amongst that offensive line. We'll see that amongst the secondary also. And and whoever's battling behind Najee, too. And Najee be asked to be better than he was in year one. The, the competition aspect of what happens in Latrobe, clearly I've never seen another camp. I've only been a stiller. But I don't know if there are many. I, I, I swear, I don't know if there's many that really get gritty and as grimy as we do. Like I told you, for years, I thought I had people at my heels just ready to take my position. And I battled day in and day out so that that didn't happen because that's the mind frame of what camp is. It will be a, quotation marks, competition. But I still Hmm. think it's Mitch's job to lose. Yeah, I I could see, uh, and this is my anticipation as well, is that you're going to see uh, the Steelers say, hey, we've added a quarterback to the mix. Uh, You know, we, we, we respect him. We know what he's done in the past. But that point that you just made about the the preseason film really jumps out at me because if you go back to last year's Buffalo game in Chicago for preseason, mm-hmm. that game, Moan, got Trubisky paid. That's I really believe that. Is it's the only thing that he had on tape? He had six mop up appearances that don't mean anything. <laughs> but he was he was accurate. He ran the offense and he had to have been mentally prepared to yeah have exactly that mindset that you're describing there. Mm-hmm. It's, it's going to be a beautiful process, man. As bleak as it can seem to some people who are so used to being, being there, I think this is probably one of the most cool, it's, it's one of the coolest times ever as a Steeler fan. You get an opportunity to see a transition and not a fall off transition, mm-hmm. but like, hey, we got something here. No, it's, it's certainly going to be entertaining. Let's put it that way. When we come back, <laughs> An equally entertaining, hopefully, Hey Moan segment. Welcome back. It's time for the Hey Moan segment. And today's comes from Joey, who says, Hey Moan, you ever scored a touchdown? <laughs> Yes. Yes, I did. Can I say this before I answer that question, though? Uh-huh. Time and time again, I've had, man, I've had visions. You know what they tell you? Man, visualize yourself scoring. Visualize yourself falling on that ball. Like, I, so many times in my career, I've been like, if we're down at the tight red zone and this ball fumbles forward in the end zone, I am going to get on it. I don't know how I'm going to act. How will act if I ever get a touchdown celebration? Like, I had that in my mind for 11 years, and it never happened. Okay. But did I score a touchdown? Yes, I did. I scored a touchdown a few times in high school. I played tight end and defensive end before they put my hand in the dirt, man. But I also. (laughs) They put your hand in the dirt? 
They did. I, I, oh my gosh. And I hate, I hated it. Okay. Let me tell you how much I hated going to offensive line. I was just like, no, uh, uh-uh. uh. like my freshman year, I played, uh, my freshman year, I played tight end and DN. You're not going to put me on the defensive. I mean, on the offensive line. Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, I didn't score <laughs> my freshman year. Lo and behold to my idiotic self. Okay. Here I was thinking I was a tight end. No, I was just an extension of the offensive line. Okay. Uh-huh. I was a blocking tight end only. My sophomore year, I go to uh I go to offensive tackle grudgingly, okay? Uh-huh. Offensive tackle to um to defensive end still, okay? And I was just yeah. like, oh my God. So what did I do the summer going into my junior year? My brother's fine. He's graduated because when I was a sophomore, he was a senior. Here I am. I'm the man now. Man. He left. I gotta be tight end one. All right. Yeah. T E one. T E one. I go back to uh tight end. I went from offensive tackle back to tight end again. Like, coach, I gotta play tight end. I'm playing tight end to DN again. Uh, and that year right there, I ended up catching the touchdown for sure. That year, only one not a gimmick, not a gimmick play designed no, play for the tight not, end. Absolutely not. Not a gimmick they play. They did at not all. waste those golden hands. They did no. not do that. Soft okay. hands, okay? Pillow all right, hands, all right. all right? Pillow strong hands, all right? But um, I go back to tight end. That's the picture you'll see me with the 85 jersey on. That was my junior year. I'm thinking I'm a prospect, okay? Lo and behold, my senior year comes around. My coach put me back at offensive tackle, and now I move inside to play defensive tackle, DK. Uh-huh. But let me tell you this. The prize behind it was I actually scored a touchdown to defensive tackle. Of what? Course. Yes, of course. Me. I'm six six. What was I in high school? Two ninety five or something like that. You this. were so twice I'm, the size of everybody you were facing. I'm but yeah. murdering these kids. Okay, <laughs> it would be to the point where when I was playing offensive line, the defensive lineman used to try to cut me, and I'm like, y'all so weak, man. Y'all got to cut me while I'm playing the offensive line. I'm supposed to be cutting you, but we're playing against this one team, and um. We're, they were close to the end zone for whatever reason. They thought they were feeling good enough to drop back pass in the end zone. And Uh-oh. I beat the center guard up the middle, man. And I, there's a picture of me grabbing the ball out of his hand and snatching oh, it for a touchdown. With one hand. One, one hand. hand. One hand. Wow. He tried to go forward. I pulled it out. So I, I scored two, maybe three touchdowns in my career. So little that I can remember all of them, right? Well, I got. I feel like I need to add here to Joey's question that – Moan has celebrated touchdowns yes, in the I NFL. Have. So there was there was one Antonio Brown who made <gasps> sure that he got you the ball in Heinz Field, and we all remember that Ooh, scene, yeah. that big spike oh. in the end zone from seventy three. It was so fun. Uh, I enjoyed that. AB made a whole lot of fun with it, man. We had a good time. Why not celebrate with the big guys? We're the one breaking our back so you can get the ball. Well, you plus he had plenty. Of- he had plenty enough of them to spare. You know what I mean? He could, It was like Oprah giving out cars, you know? <laughs> you'll get a ball. you get a ball. you get a ball. <laughs> yeah, that's no it. doubt about it. But it was fun, man. Again, like I say, you hear my bitter offensive line woes come out every once in a while. But, hey, it worked out. I did not want to play offensive line at all. Yeah. So. And, then, and now all you need to do is make sure that all those coaches who stuck you at a position you didn't want to play get Christmas cards every year embossed in gold because of all the money that they made you. That's 100%. <laughs> You're right about that. Mo, and this was fun. This was fun was. the whole week. You know, this is, this is this is what this show is is, is going to be like. You know, we yeah. have all kinds of stuff to talk about, and, oh, and no. a daily churn. On Monday, we had the Mitch Trubisky news come in, and we were like, like right when we're doing it, it was like, oh, this is really cool. You know? Yeah, I'm 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 for it, man. I think this offseason is going to be pretty exciting too. So, um, buckle up, y'all. It's going to be a great ride. I'm looking forward to it.